Dear friends, welcome to another Couching Session by MSD Animal Health. Today we have an interesting guest. He is a Managing Director for Swineworks, the specialized recruiting agency working in the United States. Welcome, Dr. Victor Ochoa. Thank you, Alex. Happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you for your time. So, first of all, as you know, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. Uh, my name is Victor Ochoa. I'm actually born and raised in Mexico. Uh, I'm a veterinarian and uh, I have over 20 years of uh, experience in the swine industry in the United States. And I'm a director of Swineworks. We are the largest company and uh, dedicated to the swine industry for staffing. We have placed about uh, more than a thousand people in the last couple of years. So happy to share our experience and what we have learned over the last few years. Thank you. And I mean, we're just talking like a little bit before the, the start of the interview about how is such an important niche. So can you tell me a little bit more, you know, the process for creation of swine, wor swine works, you know, roughly 10 years ago, I believe? Yeah, about how, uh, how a little bit less than 10 years. But uh, yeah, so we start by uh, myself start immigrating to uh, the United States working for uh, one of the largest uh, pork producers in the United States. And uh, I realized there was some need on, on, on the staffing and then over the last, I would say, five years, uh, I came with the idea that uh, that need, it wasn't only one company, but it was across the United States. Mm. And then after COVID, everything exploded, basically. Uh, there is a huge need in all the industries, not only swine, uh, but because of all our, uh, our experience uh, on the swine industry, we, we decided to uh, have that niche and specialize in, in that industry. And uh, uh, we've been quite successful and growing a lot over the last uh, two or three years. Uh, but Basically, that's, that's how we started, just identifying that need on the, on the industry. And if we dig a dig little bit deeper on the need, I mean, it's not just the staffing, right? It's the staffing, the training, consulting. So what, what really does entitle, you know, what, what, you, what you currently offer, like you said, to the swine business at least, but I'm pretty sure, especially after COVID, other industries are looking for. Absolutely, so in Swineworks, we offer three services. So we do consulting, we do the staffing part, and we do a, a lot of work on retention as well, part of the training. Mm -hmm. So uh, the way we do it is uh, bringing the workers is only one step, but how to keep them, how to retain them, and we support our clients on how to explain the difference with immigrant workers compared to uh, regional workers. And, and especially this newer generation are even more tricky to, uh, uh, to deal with and to, uh, to retain. So because of that, we actually partner up with a couple other companies on training mm -hmm. where uh, they have a, a digital presence, uh, obviously internet and, and uh, digital programs where uh, they help us train employees uh, remotely and on site. So we partner up with them. That way we can offer uh, a, a whole spectrum of uh, services to our clients. So the generation really comes to play when, uh, when we're looking for it. Um, I mean, without breaking any confidentiality, of course, what, who are your clients or what is the typical role of your client? What, what is the, the client, the type of client that you normally have? Yeah, we have over, uh, over 200 uh, clients and the vast majority of them are small producers to mid-sized producers. Uh, why? Because a lot of the largest uh, producers, they have their own uh, recruiting programs or staffing programs. Uh, but the ones that are struggling the most are the small producers and the mid-sized producers. So we are targeting those, those markets because they normally don't even have a, an HR department or somebody who can't process their visas or, or have the experience to deal with all these labor issues. So uh, the vast majority of them are, are like I said, small producers. But uh, uh, lately we have started seeing a lot of requests for other industries, not just swine, but we start having a lot of requests for poultry, for uh, livestock for dairy so we are expanding our, our business but our main uh, niche is still uh, the swine industry so basically i mean it's super inspiring because at the same time i'm listening to you and i'm i'm understanding that it's also you know building in the knowledge for the people that do not have it in order to action certain processes to bring people to support them in the business right correct there is a lot of work behind the scenes yeah. where uh, how to find them uh, how to do their visas uh, how to keep them. So just bring them, bring their workers is one step. Uh, and a lot of the producers don't realize how difficult it is on the other side of, uh, of the business. And, or they realize when they cannot bring their own, own workers. So uh, we are uh, happy to help them and, and uh, we've been quite successful doing that. 
Excellent. So, I mean, we we invited you to come to our high quality port in in, uh, in uh, Puerto Vallarta in Mexico to talk about the situation, you know, the past, the present, and the future of the labor market in swine. As you know, you're an expert, obviously, with 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 what you do. Um, can you briefly summarize how this market is currently operating? You know, taking into consideration what we talked about, you know, impact of COVID, technification, etc. How is it? How is Absolutely. it working right now? So uh, the United States is struggling right now. It's uh, struggling uh, very hard with labor, not just the swine industry, but all the industries. And, and so far, Latin America is not suffering that much because we have so much uh, population. And, and young population uh, compared to the United States. So I think Latin America is not struggling right now on labor, but my key message right now is for the future, uh, we need to start preparing for those, those challenges because I believe uh, Latin America is gonna go through the same uh, process as the US dealing right now for different reasons, not for that generational uh, challenge or change that is happening in the United States with all the baby boomers retirements and, and all that, that's basically the main reason uh, they are struggling. Uh, but I think the economy in uh, Latin America, and specifically Mexico, is going to boom. I think it's, it's, it's going to be great in the next five to ten years, mm -hmm. uh, specifically for that. But what's going to happen is all those workers are going to have better options to work with. And they are going to leave agriculture at the end. And that's exactly what happened in the United States right now. So how to prepare to that generational shift, that lack of employers or uh, employees. and uh, uh, how to prepare to that and I think the swine industry in Mexico is going to be able to make a lot of money if they prepare correctly in the next few years. And considering that and you know considering and it's super interesting because it's like the present and the future and you know, what can we expect at this moment do we really and you know why why outsourcing is is uh, a good way for staff recruitment you know why not insourcing you know I know there's a as you, as you explained a challenge in the US for instance but you know being yourself in the US do you think that still outsourcing is a better solution than looking for a local solution absolutely so uh, in one hand we have uh, I mean swine producers right their their goal is to produce pigs okay. they are not expert in finding people interviewing people they probably don't even have the manpower in HR we have just to give an idea we have over 20 uh, people on staff just doing interview all day long so uh, Producers normally they don't have that capability, especially a small producer or mid-sized producers. So uh, we are uh, a very good tool for them to use. Uh, they sometimes they see us as a competition, but once they start using our services, they realize how much benefit we bring to them. We we, we let them focus on producing pigs, or we let HR focusing on dealing with the problem with people, not with trying to find people, not trying to uh, interview as many candidates as they can, uh, not to trying to find the, the right candidate. So we can specialize that, we can we have that niche, and that allows us to help the producers better and, and, and especially find better workers for them. I think you just answered my next question, <laughs> which was, <laughs> you know, um, which was about it's it's just not a matter of having attracting good staff, but also to retain them, right? So you, I think you partially touched on this already. I mean, is there any secret? Is there any secret to do it properly? Like maybe uh, formation, you know, training. What what is adding value to the people that initially goes there for a short time, and then develop that person, bring in building skills to continue and develop. I mean, is that the way? Yeah. Uh, I think we need to understand there is a generational change or, or, or switch in the workforce. So we have kind of the old school, the baby boomers are retiring and they used to be uh, the workers that are very hard workers, very engaged with uh, their careers. They don't switch off very often. And now we have this newer generation that uh, they have lower uh, attention spams. Uh, it's harder to train. They are not that engaged. They don't they are not that interested in agriculture. Mm -hmm. So I think the biggest challenge is how to, how we're gonna approach them and uh, how we're gonna find them. And I think uh, the companies or, or the clients, they need to focus on uh, social media platforms. They need to focus especially on how to feel those employees value. Because before it used to be, I just wanna make money, I want to have my career. Now with this generation, they want to have a sense of importance, a, a sense of community. 
which is going to be a challenge for producers when they are not used to that. So uh, I think it's important to address those needs, and that way they can lower uh, their turnover. It's, it's not always about the money, uh, but how you make them feel while they are doing that, that job. So in a way, farmers and donors, they need to start also changing and you know, changing a little bit mindset and, and executing or operating in this way if they want to be successful. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And I, I think that's the biggest difference compared to other industries. You know, we have the tech industry where it's entrepreneurs. So we have the owners of companies probably the same age as the workers. Right now we have in the, in the, in the agriculture industry or swine industry, we have the owners where they are probably baby boomers. Yeah. They are the older generations. And we have a new generation that you're trying to attack, be attract because you don't have uh, those workers. So how to make that connection? So it's very important that you change that uh, mindset on, on, on the producer that the, the old workers are not coming back. You know, mm -hmm. the, the old school, that, that worker stay in the company for 20 years is not happening again. So how are we going to adjust to that mindset? So this, this also goes towards, you know, the happiness of the employee and the said, you know, especially new generations that I agree with this. I th think we all want a sense of ownership and responsibility and delivering, but I think that's very, very clear. Um, when you're kind of sourcing out people, and then of course, I imagine you go and visit the farms and see how they're going, etc. I mean, do you, do you see that a happy farm employee is a clear signal that a farm will be functionally, you know, optimally or in a better than one that is not. And, you know, ultimately, does that reflect in the animals? Do you see this? Do you see not this connection or is that not true? Well, what is your, your, you know, impression on this? Yeah, uh, so measuring happiness at, uh, at, 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 at job is, is hard for us to do it directly, but the way we measure it is by turnover. So how many, how many of our employees are leaving their, their, their farms? One reason could be that we did a bad job in selecting the candidate. The second reason could be that the producer is not creating an environment where they, uh, where they are able to retain or fulfill those needs of the candidate. Uh, so, so that's how we, we, we measure uh, uh, happiness at the job. Now, all the problems that we've seen is, we talk about animal welfare. A lot of those videos when we see uh, employees abusing the animals, you take a look at the numbers and I guarantee you they have high turnover as well. Why? Because probably they are not investing the time of training these employees, on showing the values that they have at the company. Uh, so, so turnover is very important for us and, and obviously we, what we want is to reduce that number. And one of those keys is training and invest time on those employees, for sure. So then the obvious, the obvious conclusion, I mean, at least I'm going to ask for your <laughs> opinion on this, but is definitely that um, happy employees will probably trigger happy animals and it will you know, make a much better workplace and things will work better. Would you say, would you agree with that? Yeah, I agree. Uh, uh, we have to show them why it's important, uh, or why animal welfare is important in the swine industry. Is not just for uh, the looks, which is important because we are all exposed to social media and, and cameras and everything, but how important it is to production as well. So I, I think both are hand to hand. Uh, we, I cannot see a farm that is high producing uh, uh, that is not taking care of animal welfare or is abusing their animals. And I haven't seen a high producing company that is not taking care of their, comp or of their employees either. So I think they go hand by hand. And it's, it's just not one way to be successful and not just producing as many pigs as you can. You have to take care of the employee and you have to take care of the animals as well, for sure. Um, I mean, you're obviously a connoisseur of both South and, and North America. And this was actually the question we were debating a little bit in, uh, in the beginning. I mean, do you, think, do you think the model, the business model that you have developed that is supplying one of the gaps in the industry, um, it's transferable to other markets or it's just like the American way of doing it? I mean, structure, organized, with the right resources. Yeah, I think uh, the way North America is doing it right now is based on need. And uh, I don't think that's the plan they, they want to do it. But if you don't have workers, you have to find them somewhere. And the only way to find them is to bring them from other places. And that's where immigration comes uh, handy. Uh, 
if we start seeing this problem in Mexico or Latin America where it's hard to find workers, I think that, uh, that tool is gonna be available too. Now, everything's about politics right, right now in the US and it could be in Mexico as well. Uh, when we start seeing that, if we bring immigrant workers, they're gonna threat or, or, or lifestyle, they're gonna threat or, or job openings. So it, it's a challenge, it's still in the US and it's become a, a challenge in, in Mexico as well. But uh, I don't think Latin America is on that point yet. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to take 5, 10, 20 years to get to that point. But uh, same thing, those, even if it's coming immigrant workers from other places, that generational change is going to be everywhere. Mm -hmm. So it's ap applicable to other countries as well, to other markets. So to answer your question, yes, we have to, we have to use that model uh, and replicate it in other, other industries. Um, now going a little bit off, off screen from what we were talking about, I mean, we are also seeing like huge steps towards technification of farming, right? So more and more processes and if I just go away from swine and I think about ruminants like the milk robots and everything, you know, this was unthinkable 50 years or mm -hmm. you know, more ago. Um, how do you see this, this um, technification of the farms impacting the future of swine? You know, and can we combine the specialized and the new labor that we need and they were bringing into being more savvy technically and you know, making the most of new available technologies? Absolutely, I agree. So I think technology is the second most important component uh, with this challenge. One, if you cannot find the workers, what can I do? The second will be using technology. In one hand, it's going to be more attractive for this new generation that we, we are talking about. So uh, is, if, you see, if I see a picture when I have to power wash, or I see a, a, a robot that is power washing itself, I'm going to work for that company, not for the one that is power washing. Yeah. That on one hand. In the other, we have to become more efficient because we are going to have to use less workers. Yeah. And every time we talk about technology, everybody's thinking, oh, robots, that's the only way. And no, we can talk about genetics on pigs. We can talk about... Uh, infrastructure on the farm, automatic feeders. We can talk about uh, drugs. We are here with Merck Sharp and Dom and, and you know, uh, vaccines instead of giving five shots, we can give one shot. Yeah. So how to, how to become more efficient? Because we are gonna have to use less workers. Yeah. Uh, and just to give you an idea on that, on, on technologies, in, in the United States right now, a uh, uh, 5,000 uh, sow unit is run with 12 people, 13 people. In Mexico right now, it's about 28 to 30. So, uh, and, and not because they want to, it's just because the challenge they have on, on labor. So uh, the way to approach that is definitely with technology and there's more than one way to do it, for sure. Okay. Um, so I think, well, most at, at the end, but I was thinking, you know, can you give us some tips, you know, to our listeners um, in how to get the newer generations involved uh, and attract to this business? to obviously allow the, the industry to have some kind of generation relief. And we talked a couple of points, but if you can you know, summarize it, uh, what, absolutely. what do you think? So I'll, I'll give you probably three advice. Uh, number one, just make your presence in social media. You'll be surprised still on this day, how many of my clients have websites or a Facebook page. That is, is basically free and it takes five minutes to set up. I would say 90% of them do not have anything. Uh, so how are you going to find, or how these employees are going to find you if they cannot see you? They spend all the time on the cell phone and you are not there, how are they going to find you? So number one, just, just create your social media presence. Uh, number two, review your, your uh, benefit package. This generation have different needs than, than older generations. So uh, we talk about uh, flexible work, we talk about uh, uh, remote working. We talk about vacation. This, this new generation prefer more life balance than previous generations. Mm -hmm. So take a look at, at your benefit package. Maybe salary, you can reduce it and then you can increase vacation, for example. Uh, so, so take a look at that and then take care of your current employees as well. Uh, we, a lot of the time we made a mistake of paying more to the newer uh, employees that are coming because we are struggling to find them and we forget about the current employees that we have. So uh, take a look on them. And number three, we talk about technology. That's uh, very important. So using uh, new vaccines, using uh, infrastructure, uh, using uh, all the technology available to you so you can use less labor on your, on your facilities, I think it's gonna be, be the key. All right, I mean, yeah, because <laughs> inevitably we'll take the load off, you know, the, the, work the workforce. Well, this is, I mean, 
this has been great, to be honest. I've learned a lot. <laughs> thank you for that. You know, thank you for, for sharing your kindness and, and wisdom. And it's, it's been a great honor to introduce you. I mean, I, I'm not trying to say that I've not met you before, but, you know, it was really amazing and, and super interesting. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Alex. Thank you for Thank you so much, Victor. So, dear friends, um, this has been another Couching Sessions by MSD Animal Health. You know, thank you for your time. Thank you for your interest. Uh, we hope to meet you again in another episode and take care.